A young girl is learning to cook brisket from her mom. The first thing the mom does is take the brisket and slice both of the ends off. The young girl is intrigued, and she asks her mom why she did that. Her mom thinks for a moment and answers, you know, I'm not sure. That's how I learned to cook brisket. Let's ask grandma. So they ask the grandmother, and the grandmother thinks for a moment. She says, you know, I'm not sure. That's how I learned to cook from my mom. Let's go ask her. So they ask the great-grandmother why we cut the ends off the brisket, and she looks at them with a funny look and says, my pan was too small. <laughs> a young man starts a new job. He's told that on Wednesdays, they come in at 8.15 instead of 8. But on Thursdays, they come in at 7.45. When he asks why, he's told that's just how we do it here. As the new man on the block, he accepts and follows suit. A few years later, this gentleman is now in a leadership position and is teaching the new employees about the different time, time requirements. In Fiddler on the Roof, Tevya explains, because of our traditions, we've kept our balance for many, many years. Here in Anatevka, we have traditions for everything. How to sleep, how to eat, how to work, how to wear clothes. For instance, we always keep our heads covered and we always wear a little prayer shawl. This shows our constant devotion to God. You may ask, how did this tradition get started? And I'll tell you, I don't know. But it's a tradition. And because of our traditions, every one of us knows who he is and what God expects him to do. These stories illustrate that humans are creatures of habit. Still don't believe me? How many of you are sitting in your seat? And how many of you shop at the same store even if another one is on your way home? How many things in our lives do we do more out of habit than out of necessity? Three weeks ago, Rabbi Hirsch spoke about the connection of habit and Judaism. He taught that Judaism is not just a religion of abstract ideas and ideals. Rather, it is a religion of practical policies that police our behavior. We need to habituate ourselves to the practice of Judaism, he said. Nothing great or substantial exists without habit, hard work, routine, and ritual. Values need frameworks. They cannot thrive in a vacuum. It is not enough to have an abstract relationship with the ethical principle, do justice, love mercy. We need to habituate ourselves to it constantly, daily, towards actions implementing these principles. If you want to understand the concept of God, maybe you can get something useful from a theology book. But if you want a relationship with God, you have to pray daily. So why am I repeating Rabbi Hirsch's words? Because what he was referring to was a line in the Torah that talked about the twice daily sacrifice, the morning and the evening, first prescribed in the book of Exodus, but later reiterated time and time again in the book of Vayikra, which we just started this morning. In his sermon, he taught us that there are those who feel the command to offer the daily sacrifice is the most important mitzvah of the Torah, not because of the act, but because it creates a ritual, a habit. Regardless of the act that we are being asked to do, in this case, animal sacrifice, or in today's times, the prayers of our hearts, it is the regular repetition of the act that creates the connection in our heart. In fact, the entire book of Leviticus is seen as helping the Israelites form habits. 247 of our 613 mitzvot are centered in this one book. We are told how to sacrifice animals, how to, who we can have relationships with and who we cannot, how to treat the stranger and the poor. And many of these mitzvot are actually about the sacrifices that we were told to make at the temple. And it wasn't just the daily sacrifice, morning and evening. We had sacrifices in times of sorrow, sacrifices in times of joy, sacrifices to repent for a sin we committed intentionally, 
even the one we committed unintentionally. And not only does Leviticus talk about when to sacrifice, it gives very detailed descriptions on exactly how to sacrifice. We are commanded on the specifics of what to do with the, in, the entrails, the fat, the blood. Trust me, do not read this book before a meal. You may become a vegetarian. With all of its outdated laws about bloods and gut, blood and guts, we may be apt to think that this book should, be, should wait to be taught to kids until they're older and can understand the metaphoric meaning of it. And yet, there is a tradition that young children should actually begin their Torah study with this book and these archaic rules. Even long after the temple has fallen and the sacrifices are no longer performed, young children still study this book as their first text. Why? Shouldn't we begin with the narratives of Genesis and creation, how we got here, who we are, and why we should even be part of this community? Dr. Howard Deichter teaches us that a child should begin to, to learn Leviticus because it is more important for a Jew to know how to behave and what to do than to know the background and the makeup of his or her universe. Thus, for the religious Jew, the halakha is the instrument which allows us to reach true spiritual redemption. In other words, by creating a habit of performing rituals, we open ourselves up to being elevated spiritually. One of the unique aspects of the Jewish tradition is that we are a religion that is more interested in what you do than in what you believe. Judaism, unlike many other religions, spends less time re re regulating our thoughts and emotions and focuses instead on our actions. Take tzedakah. While it's nice if we want to perform acts of justice, the Torah doesn't bother itself with trying to convince us that we should want to perform tzedakah. Instead, it tells us that we are obligated to perform those acts of justice because our world is in need of them. Our thoughts and intentions come second to the execution of the act. And so too with prayer. We are not told to pray only when the spirit moves us, rather we are commanded to pray regularly regardless of our mood. Rabbi Abraham Joshua Heschel teaches us that only when prayer becomes habitual and second nature are we truly able to transcend the words of the prayer and find the deeper spiritual meaning. If you are focusing on getting the sounds and the words right, your mind won't have the capacity to wander into the depths of, this, of spirituality. So today, as we enter into the book of Leviticus, over the coming weeks, we will read all about which animals to sacrifice and when, and what exactly to do with all of their innards. And while we are no longer expected to carry out these specific mitzvot, and if you are, please don't let your clergy know, we are still expected to make mitzvot and prayer into a habitual act. And when we are able to habituate ourselves into acting like the person we aspire to become, we are truly able to become that better person. Shabbat Shalom.